Hey y'all, I'm Mandy, and this is Mandy in the Making. Welcome back to another What's for Dinner. I've got a great week of dinners planned, and I can't wait to show that to you, but I did want to remind you, if you have a recipe that you have not submitted for our Subby Supper segment, I would love for you to do that. Email me at mandythemaking2018 at gmail.com. Let's get started. Tonight, we're gonna to try a new to us recipe for meatloaf. Cole loves meatloaf. He was so excited to hear that we're having bacon wrapped meatloaf tonight. It's from the Pioneer Woman. And we're also gonna have some mashed potatoes. The first thing we're gonna do is let this bread soak in milk for five minutes. I've got six slices of white bread and I'm gonna pour a cup of milk over that and we're gonna let it sit for five minutes. Okay, I'm gonna let that soak. While it's soaking, I'm gonna go ahead and make the sauce. I've got a cup and a half of ketchup. A third a cup of brown sugar. One teaspoon of dry mustard. And just a dash of Tabasco sauce. I'm just trying to make sure to get all of the lumps out of the brown sugar. Got some Parmesan cheese, we need a cup of it. So I'm gonna finally grate that. I've had a good number of people ask me where I got this grater. I love it, I got it from Ikea. Our bread has been soaking, I'm gonna add two pounds of ground beef. three-fourths a teaspoon of salt and one-fourth a teaspoon of seasoned salt. Freshly ground black pepper. Four eggs. And our one cup of Parmesan cheese. Now comes the fun part, mixing it all together. <laughs> They're a little big. <laughs> okay, so I've got this broiler pan. I have lined the bottom with aluminum foil, and we're gonna put it on the top so that the juices run down below. I'm gonna form this into a loaf here and then we're gonna wrap it in bacon. Okay, so this is ready to go in the oven. I'm just gonna put a third of the sauce on top. It's gonna go in a 350 degree oven for 45 minutes. Then we'll take it back out and baste it with some more sauce. All right, I'm gonna wash this and put this in the oven for 45 minutes. I wish y'all could smell this. This smells amazing. So now that it's been 45 minutes, we're gonna add another third of the sauce on top and it's gonna go back in the oven for another 25 minutes. Okay, back in the oven for another 25.
We had a little Parmesan cheese left over, so I'm just gonna add this to our potatoes. Bacon wrapped meatloaf. I'm excited about this. It looks really good. Cole is giving me a big thumbs up. He's already taken a bite. <laughs> he loves meatloaf. It smells delicious. Whoa. Mmm. Wow, that is really good. It doesn't mm. seem like it's dry at all. Not one bit, not in the slightest bit. The bacon flavor is just over the top. And that's definitely why this is so juicy uh, and not dry whatsoever. The bacon is just incredible. This is delicious meatloaf. Mm. So I'm not gonna show you on camera, but I do wanna ask you a question, Cole. Um, for those of you wondering, I get this question all the time. Cole just does not want to be on camera, so I'm just not going to show him. I have a 14 year old son. Um, this one or the barbecue meatloaf, which one is your favorite? That's a tough question. Tough question, okay. I think this. This, this one? Yeah. Shut your mouth. Are you serious right now? Wow, because there's bacon probably, right? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm glad this was a hit. It's really good. As always, I've got the recipe linked in the description box below, so go check that out. And I'm gonna start enjoying my food now. Hey y'all, tonight we're gonna have oven baked chicken leg quarters and we're also gonna have some fried corn with some bacon. Tonight's recipe is incredibly simple and you can always change out the spices to whatever you like and your family likes. I'm just going to mix up the spices, put it on the chicken and put the chicken in the oven. I've got about three tablespoons of butter here. I'm gonna add some olive oil as well. And then, like I said, you can use any spices that you want. I'm gonna use some onion powder, some garlic powder, some poultry seasoning, and to add a little extra color, we're gonna add some paprika in there. and transfer my chicken quarters over here onto this broiling pan. I lined the bottom of it with some tin foil. So now I'm just gonna rub this all over the chicken just so the flavor is all around. All right, this is ready to go in the oven. I've got the oven preheated to 400 degrees. These are gonna go in for about 45 minutes. Our chicken is still going. We're gonna get started on the fried corn with bacon. I'm just gonna cut up these slices of bacon here. I have five slices. I don't quite need that much, but that's how much we had left in the fridge, so might as well. I only need a very small amount of this onion, even though it, this is a small onion. And I did wash my knife, don't worry. Got some chives here. It's just gonna go on the top at the end. So I was planning on draining the bacon, but honestly, 
if you can see, there's not that much bacon grease in here. So I'm just gonna leave it in and I'm gonna add my onion and we're gonna cook it until it's translucent. I've got about a half a teaspoon of sugar. I'm gonna add that in just to add a little sweetness. And we're gonna add in our corn. I've got a bag of frozen corn that I have thawed out. We're just going to fry this up for about eight to 10 minutes. minutes we checked the internal temperature of the chicken and it wasn't quite ready yet these were very large quarters so we put it back in for 15 more minutes so we baked it for a total of an hour winner winner chicken dinner <laughs> I'm excited about this one. I know too it's gonna be good it looks delicious and yeah Mmm. That's easy to eat. It just comes right out of the bone. It looks super juicy. Well, it's cooked perfectly. It's really juicy. And then the seasonings, that rub, that seasoning rub that you put on there, yeah. that's really good. Cole's giving me like major thumbs up over there. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah? And that was so easy. This whole meal was super easy. Lots of flavor in that. Man. Well, you can never make corn any other way <laughs> except this way from now on. This is amazing. Noted. Man, that's good. Wow. This corn is amazing. Yay. I did not expect that kind of reaction over corn, so I'm well, pretty stoked. You know, I'm not just the, I like corn on the cob yeah. because you can do more with it, I feel like, you know, with the butter, yeah. salt, put some paprika on it. And it seems like, you know, corn off the cob is a little, a little different to It's a little right. lackluster. It yeah. is. Yeah. But with this, this is amazing. This is like over the top good. Yay. Really good. Awesome. So this really is a winner winner chicken dinner. For sure. <laughs> Greg C. Oh, daddy has chicken. <laughs> she didn't waste no time there. You're not gonna chew it, baby girl? You're just gonna swallow it? Oh. Grace. You've created a monster. All right, one more bite. Oh, man, <laughs> taking my finger off. You're gonna draw back a nub. <laughs> so I just had to come back on here because of what he said to me off camera. First of all, look, he has destroyed the chicken. But what did you tell me about the corn, baby? This corn changed my life. <laughs> he is so happy. He told us that he was gonna fight us over the rest of the corn in there. <laughs> this is life changing. I'm so happy, baby. It is really good. As you can see, I'm working on my plate too. It is delicious. Thank you. <laughs> It's our third meal of the week, which means it's subby supper night. Tonight's subby supper is one I'm really excited about. It's something I've never really attempted to do on my own. And this is a family recipe that Lois sent over. It comes from Lois. Lois lives in Ontario. She has two daughters. She is the youngest of nine children, and this is her mom's spaghetti sauce. She said that all of her siblings make it a little bit differently. They all have their own spin to it, 
but Lois makes it just like her mom made it. Lois had a business where she was helping out seniors and shut-ins. She was going and running errands for them, getting their groceries for them. I love that. I think that's absolutely awesome. She said her health has prevented her from continuing to do that, but she does still have one person that she goes and checks on. It's a 92-year-old lady who is all alone in a nursing home, and she said she checks on her, and she also spends Christmas Day with her, and I think that is so sweet. Lois, you have such a kind heart, and I so appreciate you sending over your mom's spaghetti sauce. Let's get started. I did want to mention this is probably going to make somewhat of a large batch. I thought about halving it, but honestly, I think what we're going to do is just make the whole thing, and I'm going to freeze half of it so that we have spaghetti sauce for another night. So I have two onions that I have diced up that made me cry. And then I have two pounds of ground beef. She said that you want lean ground beef, so I got 18, 19 ounces of tomato sauce. And two 28 ounce cans of diced tomatoes. A teaspoon each of salt and pepper. got a good number of spices that are going in here. Check the description box and they'll all be there. We need about six dashes of Tabasco sauce. We're gonna let this come up to a simmer. I'm gonna turn this down to low and put the lid on it and let it simmer for an hour. the easy route tonight and doing a bagged Caesar salad. Homemade spaghetti sauce. Very tasty. Really, really good. I love it. I love all of the flavors in it. Um, I don't know if we've ever made homemade spaghetti sauce. No, nope, I've never made it. Well, this sets the, the standard really high now. Awesome. For spaghetti sauce, very good. Cole's really giving good. it a thumbs up. It's got just a, a tiny kick to it from the Tabasco sauce, and I think you put some cayenne pepper in there. I did, like a fourth a teaspoon Just of a little bit, yeah. yeah. So definitely got a little kick to it. Just barely, I mean, 
it's barely noticeable. Awesome. But yeah, I love the the chunkiness of the meat and the onions in there. And then we've got plenty left over to freeze, so we're gonna mm -hmm. let it cool down and put it in the freezer and that will come in handy. So thank you, Lois, so much for sending us this recipe. I cannot wait to give it a try. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, if you'll just give it a thumbs up, that really does help out my channel. And if you haven't already, I would love for you to join my YouTube family. Hit that red subscribe button below. It's totally free to do so, and it just lets YouTube know that you're interested in what I'm putting out, and it's gonna notify you every single time that I upload a video. Thanks y'all, and I'll see you next time. Bye.